The Queen's Silver Jubilee, marking 30 years on the throne, was celebrated all over the country, including New Cross in the Lewisham Borough. I've done a social investigation to the change in the area between 1977 and 2012, looking into immigration and social cohesion, then and now. It's surprising what I found. Looking back at those images from 1977, it all looks happy. Everyone's sitting at their street parties. Great, happy United Nation. But 11 years earlier, in 1965, Lewisham Council decided to knock down half of their old stock of houses, starting in Deptford. It caused a lot of tension. Generations of family who had lived in the area were forced out of their homes, some with compulsory purchase orders. Perfectly good homes were knocked down and then they were expected to move into the high-rise flats that had been built on Clifton Rise. Horrid grey blocks. Being brought up on the streets of Deptford and New Cross with their old alleyways, he played out on the street and big gangs playing knockdown ginger and British bulldog. It was no wonder that these families felt resentful. Of course, a lot of them refused to move into the blocks and instead moved to areas like Bexley Heath, Eltham, Woolwich. Lewisham Council couldn't fill their brand new flats, so they started to move the people who were lower down on the housing list, Afro-Caribbeans. Al Capone guns don't argue! <laughs> Seven, and we all sat out in a big table with that ice cream and jelly, and we all got a silver spoon in a box. It was pucker. So, do you think over the years, like it's been 30 years now, so it's the next jubilee? How how has your sort of Britain, England changed? Oh, it's changed. It's changed untold. Got all different cultures and all different races, and but I think. You know, we need to celebrate because they all live in this country, so why not celebrate it and, not, you know, get on with it. And Do you mind seeing people of different cultures use, using and wearing the Union Jack? Oh, I think it's great. I, I love it. I think they, yeah, no, I think it's great. I do. Honestly, I think it's lovely. Yeah. So you're looking forward to this year's Jubilee then? Oh, my God, am I? Yeah. God save our Queen. When you say that it's changed in 30 years, like, like what? Describe describe it. In the 70s, there was one black boy in my class called Wally Bowler. He was my best friend. And that was it. And then, Oh, yeah, no, we had an Asian guy called Alpesh, and that was it. And the rest of us were all white, coming from Bellingham as well. That's how it was. But we all sat down, and we all had a nice time. But now it's totally different, isn't it? You know, you've got all different cultures, all different races and stuff. But it's nice because I work at the school as well and I see them all with all their Union Jacks on and have their face paint. I think the majority of kids in your class are black, with different colours. Yeah, they are. It's all a different multicultural school. But they all appreciate where they come from. Where, yeah, but, we all, but at the end of the day, we appreciate where they come from. So on a day of celebration where they live, they do. They, they, they all get together and it's really nice. We had face painting. We had a, um, a jubilee fair on Saturday just gone. How would you describe yourself, like, culturally? How do you describe yourself? Well, I'm very English. I'm a very English person. I'm, I'm, I'm probably a right cockney. And, um, and that's how... And, yeah, but I still like people for what they are. Lewisham has the highest proportion of black Caribbean residents in inner London. Of course, when I was younger, I didn't realise that. And it's only now that my white friends tell me that when they go to Lewisham or Catford, they can feel out of place. They feel that they are a minority amongst the blacks of the area. So now a lot of them go into Bromley, Saver Centre Sydenham or Blue Water in Kent. In 1977, I was a young girl. I was living in a hostel in New Cross and I was mixed race. There were not very friendly relations with the police and some of the most vivid memories for me were the far right National Front Party campaigning in the area. I was petrified. They wanted all black people to be repatriated. I remember thinking, where the hell am I going to go? You would never go out if Millwall were playing at home. Then 21 young men were arrested in Lewisham on charges relating to mugging offences. 
This was to start a battle not seen on the streets of London since the Cable Street riots and the first time that British police used riot shields in this country. May 30th, 1977, 21 black youths were arrested in their homes and charged with mugging offences. Saturday, 18th of June, fighting between National Front and Socialist Workers' Party activists in Lewisham Town Centre, where both groups are selling newspapers. Monday, 4th July, 1977, Lewisham National Front organiser Richard Edmonds complains about police arrest of National Front supporters. He announces plans for a National Front demonstration in Deptford in August, promising its biggest ever rally. Saturday, 2nd July, Lewisham 21 Defence Committee demonstrate in New Cross in support of the arrested youths. 300 demonstrators march through Lewisham and New Cross. More than 100 National Front supporters turn out to attack it. National Front throw bottles, rotten fruit and bags of caustic soda at marches. More than 60 people, fascist and anti-fascist, are arrested in clashes in New Cross Road and Clifton Rise. Monday 4th July, 56 people appear at Camberwell Magistrates Court. A 29-year-old mother of five from New Cross is given an absolute discharge after admitting threatening behaviour. She told the court, I was called a nigger lover in front of my children, which I objected to. Sadly, not all the ones coming over are the type of people you really want in the area, and they're bringing the area down. Um, there's a massive problem down here at the moment with alcoholics and a lot of those do actually seem to be from the Eastern European countries. They come over here, they, they can't get anything, can't get a job, can't get on with themselves, you know. So I suppose they just turn into drink. But then you don't know if they come over from their country because they don't want them in their country, you know. But you have to be careful what you say because you can't, you know, it's not politically correct to start criticising immigrants. People don't like change. And the older you get, the more you feel isolated. And that's when you start thinking that things have changed for the worse. You don't know your next door neighbour is now like you used to years ago. Everybody yeah, knew everybody, didn't gone, they? Gone, isn't the community yeah, spirit's yeah, gone, isn't it? Really? You just don't know anybody anymore. I think that's what it is. You know you've moved from the Elephant and Castle up to Orpington. I mean, now you've come back down for the day. Do you think you'd ever consider moving back into Never. London? Never. Never. Oh, she meant that, didn't she? No, never. <laughs> That's it. I was saying to you earlier on, yesterday I saw some African yeah. um, people draped in the flags and I think 30 years ago that, that wouldn't have happened. What do you think? No, I don't think it would have happened 30 years ago. I think yeah, that's how things have changed, isn't it, now? Yeah. People, people are more accepted now. They probably wasn't accepted so much 30 years ago, but now everybody's accepted. It's the only good thing that's come out of this country. <laughs> Thursday, August the 11th, High Court Judge Justice Slynn rejects a request by Lewisham Council to issue a writ of mandamus, compelling the police commissioner to ban all marches in the borough for three months. Lewisham is represented in court by John Mortimer, who said... Madness, madness, they call it madness. Madness, madness. We call it madness. It's plain to see that is what they mean to me. So it was called the Battle of Clifton Rise. Do you feel that you your side won the battle? Oh yeah, for sure, because they 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 they, they didn't go no further. It, it ended at New Cross. It was a stronger community then much stronger do you understand young and old was out there you understand what i'm saying and that day new cross came on the, the the map as as to say you know it was do you, when you say uh, young and old were there black and whites as well black and white black and white people i went to school with primary school they, they weren't having it neither you understand what i'm saying National Front organiser Richard Edmonds tells the press, we are deliberately going into the black areas of Deptford because these are also the areas where we have a lot of support. And, and there was a family called the Frenchies and they were on our side as well. The Frenchies, were they a white family? A white family, very, you know, well known in the area. You know what I mean? Everyone stuck together, shoulder to shoulder and everything, and we weren't having it. So you believe that it made the community down here even stronger? Much stronger, much stronger. Do you understand? After that day, people, we felt... 
more of a, a unit. You understand what I mean? It, it was just, it was, it's sad to say, but we felt good. Do you understand that nothing, they didn't achieve their purpose. Instead of splitting us, they brought us together. What was their purpose? Their purpose, I thought, was just to divide us. You know, they thought the whites would have been on this. There is hand-to-hand -hand fighting in New Cross Road and National Front marches are forced off the road into the pavement. One young man, perhaps 16 years old, rushed into the front ranks and grabbed a flagpole from one of them, broke it in half and held the pieces up while the crowd cheered. Others held dustbins and fence stakes into the front column from close range. The protesters then burnt captured National Front banners. Do you understand that nothing... They didn't achieve their purpose. Instead of splitting us, they brought us together. What was their purpose? Their purpose, I thought, was just to divide us. You know, they thought the whites would have been on their side who lived in the area and they would have understood and things like that. But they understood because they were poor like us, the, the whites in, in, in Clifton Rise and, you know, Milton Court. We, you know, our neighbours, everyone who went to school together, we went through the same thing, the same hardship. And it was... It just brought us more it's, together. It's understand? changed dramatically. Is that the bad side of the change in the 30 years? Yeah, I think it's bad. I do think it's bad. I think it should be mixed and culture and that. I, I, but I don't, to be honest with you, I don't even go to Catford anymore. I go to Save Centre and Bromley. Why? Well, because I don't feel like I belong down in Catford anymore now. I don't feel, I, I feel out of place there because I'm white. I don't feel like it's a place that I need to go to because that's just, I don't know. What about Lewisham, to go to Lewisham? Well, rarely, no, I don't. I, I'd rather go to Bromley, to be honest with you. Yeah. I don't mean that makes me a snob, but... In or a racist. No, not yeah. at all. Not, I'm not at all, but I like a mixture of people and yeah. I just feel like if I go to Lewisham or Catford, it's all... Um, Black, do you feel like you're in a minor minority? Yeah, of course I do now. Of course I do. I work at a school. It's like 90% black. Which, it, uh, you know, I haven't got a problem with that, but I like a mixture of people. I like black, white, Asian, Chinese. I like nice people. But, but still. Uh, yeah, no. It's all changed, mate. It's all changed since the 70s. Of course it has. Especially in Catford. Do you think it's gone down? Yeah, I do. I do think it has gone Got any positives about the last 30 years? <laughs> Long, hard think. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh, it does. But, but you definitely don't see yourself as a racist. You like the change in a way. Yeah, I do like a change, but, I, you know, I, if I go, to, to be honest with you, if I go to Catford, really do I Google. My mum and dad had a store in Catford Market, and it was like... It was really, it was, it was, it was a good market. We had the pie and mash store, and we had the uh, Ken the fish, the shoe man. We had an algae on the corner. And we used to go down there every day uh, were they on a Saturday white? and Sunday. Yeah, and they were all white. Yeah, and I go down there now, and it's all nails and chicken shops. The first crack house was found in England. Was found in Clifton Rise. Um, it, it's, it's not a community anymore. It's not a community. What like. Uh, Everyone watched out for everyone, black and white and everything. And if there was any problem, everyone united and they dealt with the problem. But now it's, it's different. There's too much drugs in the area. There's too much newcomers, I, I, I would say, because they've moved a lot of the people who, 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 who grew up in this area out, you know? There's, they're not the same anymore. And When you say the newcomers, what newcomers? Like the, the Chinese, the... A lot, and well, the Africans. I remember when the Ice Street was just was more pubs than food shop or anything. There will always be community wherever you are in the world. It may not be your idea of a community, but nevertheless, it is. Some of the whites that moved out of the area were descendants of Huguenots. So, if logic is used, you can be sure at some stage, a few hundred years ago, local residents were moaning and fighting about the immigrants in the local. Deptford area. The Battle of Clifton Rise in Lewisham gave birth to a new community.